We bought this farm three years ago and had to take out a substantial mortgage. We have a level of indebtedness that requires meticulous management to avoid getting into big trouble in lower payout years. In our first two seasons we wanted to get the cows eating as much as possible and deliberately made less silage to reduce expenses while we got on our feet. We would offer the herd 1.1 or up to 1.2 hectares twice per day instead of our standard 1 hectare per milking. Basically, running by the mindset, more is more is more. Doing this produced more litres, but the components dropped and when all was said and done, the change in actual milk solids was zero. The health of the cows was unchanged and the fertility was no better. The extra feed costs were significant though. We fed an extra 0.2 to 0.4 hectares per day every day for 100 days of the milking season. This added up to a significant area of feed for no measurable gain. So this season we have stuck to one hectare of pasture per milking and shut as much hay and silage as possible with any surpluses that appeared. This observation and approach led us to think more about feed efficiency, which is a very complex topic. Much of the focus around feed efficiency is centred around breeding and selecting for the most efficient converters of feed to milk. A lot of this focus, particularly in New Zealand, is assumption-based and does not consider differences in feed. Cows and farms are complex ecosystems and we have often wondered if those simple measurements are overly reductionist and run the risk of missing key components of the overall efficiency equation. I'm going to give you some advice. You need a new bucket. It's got two massive holes in it. It's very inefficient. We breed our cows for 12 weeks and today is the 16th of January and marks the last day of mating so any returns after today will be our empty cows for the season. 12 weeks is probably a longer mating period than the average New Zealand dairy farm. There has certainly been a trend towards shorter mating periods and therefore more condensed calving periods in springtime. In our situation, because we have limited heifer raising resources, we would rather keep a trouble-free October calving cow than have to raise an extra heifer replacement for two years. Waiting an extra three weeks for a pregnancy seems more cost effective to us than two years worth of grazing. Our October calving cows end up producing more than the average two-year-old by the end of the season, which is what she would be replaced with if we moved to a nine-week mating. The other factor we take into consideration when determining mating length is if all of our cows calved in seven to nine weeks, it would pressurise our feed resources in the early spring months, which would reduce our ability to create silage and hay. Spring milk is nice, but we would be robbing Peter to pay Paul, with a $1.20 per kg premium paid from February through till the end of May, we choose to continue to do it this way. Within our own herd it would be virtually impossible to measure efficiency without knowing what each individual cow was eating. It is probably a very unpopular thing to say, but we compared notes with my dad and concluded that there is a very strong argument that our cows are less efficient than they were 25 years ago. In other words, it takes more inputs to produce the same. It is even logical when we stop to think about it. The foundation of this herd has been selected for performance for over 40 years because output is very easy to measure.
keep replacements from your top producers, right? But because we can't measure individual cow intake, have we inadvertently created a significant bias? In the past, when the cows were milked, we would let them go straight to the paddock to keep them eating. The first row had the best access to feed and the last row had about an hour less grazing time after each milking. This was probably worse during periods when we were topping because cows eat a lot faster when feed is pre-cut. Could different grazing access and times lead to a significant selection bias and feed efficiency imbalance? It is hard to say for sure, but we thought it warranted some focus. We looked at our herd test data at the end of last season and compared individual performance with the order each cow was milked, aka row number. What we found was that the cows in the first two rows were on average one year older and produced 50 kgs of milk solids more than the cows in the last two rows. This was significantly more, but it raised the impossible question. Is there a difference in feed distribution and how big of a difference is there between what the first cows to be milked eat and what the last cows eat? In other words, how many kgs of feed is it taking to produce a milk solid and is it different between the first and the last row? We decided it was a reasonable assumption that the first cows to be milked were getting more feed than the last cows, which raised the question, is there any health advantage in that? We then compared the measurable health outcomes of the cows versus the row number they are milked in. That is when it started getting interesting. Last year's herd empty rate was 10%, but when we broke that number down into milking row, the first two rows had an empty rate of 20%, the third and fourth row had a 10% empty rate, the fifth and sixth row had a 5% empty rate, and the last two rows had a 0% empty rate. The somatic cell count exceeds and mastitis incidence was also higher in the first two rows. Hundred and twenty seven. Ah, oh, so, uh, so uh, there's hundred and twenty seven pairs and numbers. Yeah, that's right. This season we decided to make some changes and run an on farm trial. Now the cows wait on the feed the pad until everyone has finished milking and then they all go to the fresh pasture break at the same time. This gives every cow equal access to feed and equal grazing opportunity. We are looking forward to the last herd test in May to compare findings and see if there are any differences in performance doing it this way. Over the coming months we will also begin to see what this year's empty rate is and how the supplement stores are stacking up compared to previous seasons. i
chasing mountains I can't climb Holding out for heroes in the night I find myself here in the dark We learn to fight and learn who we are But I am raised up to face the stars Full of light And we are Out of my mind like the dark in the distance Wild We are wild This season we clean the feed bins religiously after every milking. This ensures all cows get the same amount of meal every milking. It means that first and second row cows don't come and gorge themselves on feed that was left over from the previous milking. <laughs> 